I greet you all in the great name of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Today I proceed with the lesson Cries of the Founding Mothers. In last session I have briefed the disgusting voices of our founding mothers in different situations during the course of their lives and tried to discover reasons as well as the solutions to overcome certain impediments in our lives. we are crying because we are in flesh is the first reason which was studied in the last class the second reason is that the curse of god to this earth at the fall of man we are crying and feeling depressed because the lord cursed this world we are living in this cursed world lord said to adam cursed is the ground for your sake in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you and you shall eat the herb of the field the lord god cursed and made man to live in the midst of thorns and thistles none could escape the pricking of these thorns and thistles even we could hear the cry of apostle paul in romans 7:24 oh wretched man that i am who shall deliver me what is the reason for wretchedness it is because of sin why there are failures regrets guilt cries restlessness in the lives of all all are offshoots of the sin believers are not exception to this common effects of sin and the curse of the lord but what is solace here is to the children of god is that there is a solution for it the solution for the problems due to the curse of god on this fallen earth i have drawn from the verses in genesis 5:28 and 29 This verse says this one shall bring us comfort from our work and from the toil of our hands in the ground which the Lord cursed When Noah was born Lamech believed that this newborn child would bring comfort to them in this cursed world Lamech's comfort in the cursed world is his son Noah During the reign of Caesar Augustus of Rome towards the end of the 1st century BC a unique child was born in bethlehem to comfort the distressed mankind he brought glad tidings to all this cursed world he imparted glory peace and love upon this weary world he is the solution to the cry of all the sinners as well as the saints when richard adam cried because he was naked the lord clothed him he took the wretchedness of adam and his descendants on the cross and set them free when a child of god is bound to undergo the trauma of deception disappointments depression or any type of physical or mental agony she has complete comfort and protection in her savior He has countless way out for us to come out of our grieving situations. He is always waiting for us with the glad tidings, peace and love. All these have to be trusted by the child of God. Why trusting you will see the glory of God. In Matthew 11:28 he says, "Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burden and i will give you rest generally we think that this verse is for sinners and unbelievers and this is to be used exclusively in the gospel meetings but it is not so it is for all who are in weary and who carry heavy burden i need to assure this is first for me and all others are next yes you trust and are while the comfort zone always in him with him by him and of him 
Next is the third reason for our cry is Satan, the unseen enemy. We are crying because of Satan. He is our adversary, always attacking the righteous people. He is a sadist who likes to enjoy the pain of the righteous and rejoicing their cries. There are so many weapons in his arsenals. Those are referred as fairy dots of the wicked in a patient 616. With the fairy dots, he makes unceasing attacks upon saints. Once he made an attack on Apostle Peter and he denied the Lord. He made Peter to cry bitterly. Our Lord predicted it and pleaded for Peter. The Lord is our pleader, always pleading against all the accusations of the Satan. The resurrected Lord met Peter on the shore of Tiberias. Lord said to Peter, Simon, do you love me more than these? He asked the same thrice. When the Lord was asking, Peter would have not forgotten the denial incident. What sort of injury that had made in his heart and mind in the career of his disciples. But now the Savior is very lovingly longing for Peter's love. I guess this love and the longing of the Lord must have been the ointment of Gilead to heal the wounds kept in the clinic of the Lord as said in Jeremiah 8.22. Peter said, Lord, you know everything. Everything includes the denial of the Lord, a satanic attack. Yes, the Lord knows the pain of his heart and mind. Now comfort him by pleading for the love of Peter, the one who denied him. What a friend he is. Peter didn't say, Lord, I love you at first. But now the Lord is pleading him. How much Peter must have been encouraged from all sorts of discouragements. This is available to all of us because the same Peter is telling very strongly in the house of Cornelius that God does not show favoritism. The man who was attacked by Satan cried bitterly is used mightily by the Lord. In this connection, I desire to share little about the experience of Apostle Paul. He was attacked by Satan in a peculiar manner. He explained his experience in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 as, A thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. There was a thorn. It was the messenger of Satan which would buffet him. The messenger of Satan will bring messages from Satan to Paul and those messages hit the head of Paul as thorns. It was unbearable to Paul. What could it be? J. I. Baker is telling, the messenger of Satan brought hard thoughts about God that it would so painful to Paul. It might be a thought contradicting to his faith or evil thoughts or doubts. This is a type of attack of Satan on mind. It would disturb our mind and heart. The adversary will confuse us, challenge us. He will call us for argument. He sets battle on our mind. His subtle ways are numerous and those will make us to stumble if we are ignorant of it. Such times the Lord is allowing us to undergo and also giving abundant grace to overcome it. Battle on mind is common among many godly men who are used mightily by God against the kingdom of the prince of this world. One thing we have to keep in our mind is that the battle which we are fighting is already won on the cross. Symbolically, our Lord was crowned by thorns to give peace to us above all understanding. What do we have to do in such dormant situation? 
a simple and the easiest work to do is make known to god with praise as said in philippians 4:6 do not be anxious about anything then what will happen the peace of god that passeth above all understanding will guard your heart and my and your mind in christ jesus this provision is always available to all the children of god on their request i stop here and continue in the next week god willing thank you